Thank you for joining me on this glorious night. Um, we're going to be talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990, the original independent film, the the best, one of the best comic book adaptations of all time. And joining me tonight is Tom from Midnight's Edge. What's up, Tom? Finally, I can say hello and people can hear me. Hello. <laughs> and yes, I agree with you. In fact, this may be my favorite movie of all time. Ooh. Now that Empire Strikes Back is kind of. Oh, yeah, that's a hard one. Wore off a little bit on me. So, yeah. Like, so I, this said, is like I said quickly earlier. creeping up there. Like I said earlier, I, it is definitely one of my top three favorite movies of all time. It's the only one, one those... that might beat it is Jaws. Oh, man, that is such a classic. I almost don't even put that in my top three. It's like on a different level of just best films. I don't know. It's like a, it's it's different for me because it's like that's a movie that my dad would just at any time of any day would just have on. So it would just at any, you just walk in the room and he's in, he's in watching the movie. It's just like it would come on. You'd watch it. You know, you yeah, have to put it on. like somehow yeah. it's on at all times. Well, I think TNT had it for a while there where like all you had to do yes. was turn on TNT and it was on like all the time. <laughs> like every other all day it was on. Uh, but yeah, no, like it's a whole nother echelon. And yeah, that's one of my movies too, where it's just I see it, I gotta finish it. Goodfellas, Jaws, yep. Yep. you know, Ninja Turtles. They're all in that level. Back to the Future, Beverly Hills Cop, you mm-hmm. know, just uh Bever- Be- we do we gotta we gotta do a yeah. discussion about Be- Beverly Hills Cop because that's another one of my favorite movies. I love it. Yeah, Jeff and I love to talk about it all the time. I'm surprised uh, we should have asked him if we he wanted to hop Jeff. in on this one. I'll see if he's busy. Yeah, but oh, uh, um, so let let me uh, let me ask you a question. So, what got you into Ninja Turtles? Now, I wasn't around around whenever Ninja Turtles first like got big. I I didn't come around until '92. You know, so all that stuff like blew up before I was uh, was born. But you were around. So, what was that like? Like seeing all that stuff right. kind of blow up at the same time. Well, like, okay. So first I remember my first recollection of that period was, see, I didn't get to see the cartoon right away. Cause where I happened to live, they didn't carry it. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't happen to show up in syndication. And uh, so I was well aware of the toys. The toys were like everywhere. Everybody had the toys. So my brother and I each got one. I think I got Raphael and he got Donatello. I mean, everybody knew who they were, what they were all about. I mean, even though we hadn't seen the the cartoon yet. And then I finally got to see the cartoons, which would have been that first five set uh, miniseries. Right, yeah. That, that come out. Um, and then, you know, so that was like the first thing out there. So that we had that. And then there was another season that finally hit. And that's where you got a bunch of the, a bunch more episodes. And somewhere between that season, they announced the movie. And I first remember hearing about it. I was looking through a comic book at the gro- grocery store. And on the back, I flipped to the back, and here's this thing with the Ninja Turtles, the, the picture you have behind classic, us right now. Like, popping out of the Yeah, the and I'm like, cover. whoa, what the hell is this? Yeah. And it says, this is no cartoon. Teenage Mutant. What? No, where? When? Yeah. You know, I'm like freaking the fuck out. <laughs> so this is probably like maybe December, January, I first heard about it. And then they had just started talking about the movie coming. And my first images I actually saw of the film were on the cereal box. For Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cereal. And I actually didn't because the, the original trailers, they didn't really come out to like way late. Yeah. And and so I thought Tatsu was Shredder. Actually, I didn't know that was I didn't know there was a t- totally different character because oh, it was like oh, a picture yeah, of Tatsu. Yeah. There was a picture of Tatsu with the foot around him. Then they had Donatello coming out of the sewer. And then like the one picture where all four of them are yeah. like just about to go after Danny. And those were the first three images I ever saw. And I just saw them. and like, oh, my God they managed to actually make them look like they do want, I mean, it was just, it was unreal because I'm used to stuff like at that point, you know, we had He-Man and the Masters of the Universe cartoon. Right. Not, or, in our movie, nothing like the cartoon. Nothing, nothing like all. the cartoon. They're like, yeah. They come through a portal and end up on Earth and it's like, why? Why yeah. would you do that? So like, we really had very little to like, kind of be like, you know, like no, nobody had, had imagined that this movie would be as good as it was. Right. And then when, and then I got to see it opening night and it was just, it just blew me away. I mean, I saw it probably five, six times in the theater altogether when in that period. But it was just like, I, I don't remember any movie being that big in my childhood since stuff like Star Wars. You know what I right. mean? Like it, maybe Roger Rabbit would be the closest. Um, and that was like maybe two years before that. But like, 
it just sucked the air out of that summer and it was everybody was talking ninja turtles it was everywhere i mean i had the posters the shirts everything it was you had trading cards stickers you know it's it, like it just a resurgence yeah it was a resurgence of all the ninja turtles and i mean ninja turtles were everywhere at that point you right. couldn't you know you could walk into a store and get ninja turtle cookies and <laughs> candy bars <laughs> ninja and everything turtle, everything gummy bears and whatnot yeah they had everything and then you know and then of course the second movie came a year later but yeah like it just when that first movie hit it was just there was nothing like it i mean we couldn't really compare it to anything and like you said in the opening i agree it's got to be one of the best comic book adaptations out there aside from maybe the original superman film yeah dude it's perfect i have a funny connection with it so like i said i wasn't there whenever it first came out but i had the for some reason i don't know how we got it but it was just one of those VHSs that was just a part of my family's collection. Like right. I don't remember going out and getting it. I, it was just one of those things. It's like my dad had gotten it at some point in his life and it was just now mine. So it was one of those that was on the shelf that I would just always go to and watch. And, and again, it's got that poster that like provocative poster of them popping out of the, the manhole cover. And you just like want to watch it all the time. That, that, that cover alone of the, of the VHS was so well made and it has like such a contrast it brings you in and you want to watch it so i watched it all the time like on repeat and i also i don't know if you remember but they had uh i think this was a pizza hut tie-in or something like that but they had the like a couple of the episodes on vhs yes those so actually just, yeah what was it like i say those actually came out the week of the movie i got those the day the movie okay. came out yeah it was yeah, really cool because so, yeah. yeah that was the first T- tmnt vhs's i ever had and those were like episodes i believe from the third season like the the before it even had aired so they were brand yeah. new episodes when they came out on vhs it was awesome yeah so there was like a, a collection of like four of them and each vhs had two episodes or something like that and i had a couple of them because my grandpa got them for me he thought oh th- i bet he'll like these and he got them and there's another thing that i just watched like all the time wore out and I watched this, the first movie, and I loved it so much, and I never knew that there was a second movie until I was, like, 17. Like, it went through my whole life going, oh, wow. man. Because I guess I just never looked into it, and whenever I was 17, it was still, like, the, the internet was kind of, it wasn't huge. I mean, it was huge, but it wasn't, you know. Well, for perspective about, you were, how, you were born when? 92. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this is, yeah, see, the, big, the second so film was like, just about as big as the first film, but, yeah, yeah. the... Yeah, by the time you'd have been born, the third film had come out, and yeah, it kind yeah, of all, all of them are done its thing. But I had never, I never looked into it. I just thought, okay, this is this great movie, and I never looked into it. And I was always thought of, as a kid, like, man, I wish they'd make another one of those. That was so good. And then I did see that there was multiples. Oh my god, there's more. Um, it, it, not as good as the first one, but the second one was still fun, and the third one was still kind of fun. I don't like the third one that much. The second was still pretty solid. I mean. Yeah, it's got get vanilla ice. That's pretty classic. You can't, you can't go wrong with that. That's pretty great. Well, the second one actually to get us back into the first movie suffers from a lot of the complaints from parents from the first film. Yeah, it's kind of like the Batman yes. and the Batman Returns. Very the, much the so. Batman Returns and Batman Forever issue. Yeah, very really much so. Got too dark and people were really scared. Like, oh, this is not going to be good for my kids. Kids didn't care, but parents were pissed. Yeah, <laughs> like, Being a kid like, watching this is... Ninja Turtles, there's not even anything really bad, I guess, except for at the very end, spoiler alert, whenever Shredder goes into the trash compactor and he gets trash compacted. But you don't really see right. anything. It's kind of like implied, and you're like, oh, damn, that's rad. Like, well, oh, man, Casey time, Jones is a badass. He just doesn't care. You got to remember, at that time, for a PG film, it didn't even get a PG-13 rating, which I, I can't believe. But yeah. it did manage to sneak wow. away with a PG. And, uh, yeah, the parents were saying it, not only was it dark in tone, but just, you know, not not just the visuals, but dark in tone. Yeah. But also, yeah, the violence was a big thing, with the, you know, especially with the weapons. So if you notice in the second film, they don't use their weapons. Yeah, they always mean. use stuff around them uh, instead of actually using weapons because that was one of the complaints. And then, of course, yeah, like then they sausage brightened. links and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And they, so they brightened it up quite a bit in the second film, made it a bit more like the cartoons. Um, but yeah, that first film though, when it came out, because the guys that made it, they weren't really inspired by the cartoon. In fact, it was a completely separate deal that was, it was made. more of the comics, right? Yeah. What it was, was like the cartoon and the movie were almost happen- happening simultaneously. Uh, Cause like originally the show was only going to be those five episodes 
and Playmates is like, no, nah, we're good. We don't need any more. Yeah. And Fred Wolf's like, it's no, to they sell our toys. Yeah, they're like, we want more. We they want a whole season of this stuff, and they're like, well, go for it. You know, like whatever. You know. So the 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 show it, it was one of those weird instances where the show wasn't as attached to the toys as like Transformers and GI Joe was back in the day. Yeah. Because yeah, after that they could use stuff from the toys, but they weren't obligated to. And and there's a lot of times there was stuff that came from the series into the toys, which is an opposite of what we had at the time. Because usually it was like the toy company like this is our new figure this week, put it in the show. You know what I mean? Or this right, is our new yeah our new uh whatever put it in the show and that wasn't the way turtles ran and that show managed to run for pff, way past the movie's lifetime i believe the oh, show yeah. didn't end until like 96 or 7 so like it was and one of the not longest too long after that they started the next ninja turtle yep cartoon yeah I mean, so it was, it was one like, of the longest running movies. animated yeah one of the longest running uh, running animated shows of all time actually especially considering it was on network television on cbs on on saturday mornings so i believe Outside of Bugs Bunny, it might have the longest run ever on Saturday morning cartoons. Wow. I'd have to check I that. It. That was a great cartoon. But, I mean, outside of Bugs Bunny, I can't think of... Maybe Super Friends had more seasons. That might be the only other thing I could think of. I mean, and now cartoons like Spongebob has blown like all those cartoons away. <laughs> it's just like running... Right. For, it's going to be running for 30 years straight and never... Yeah. Ended. Uh, yeah, and anyways, that's not even really a that that was you know that's a network show. That's a network show too. Yeah, not, not the Saturday, Saturday morning, morning cartoon that I'm talking about. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, no, like Ninja Turtles was something that you know even the creators were told this isn't going to last more than three years. Right. So get your money now. So they went into this thinking, yeah, we're going to do whatever we can in this three years because that's usually the life cycle on this thing. They never expected it to be going thirty years Explode later. Explode and keep going and yeah. they keep making movies. But yeah, so that deal was separate. So they had this Hong Kong company that made all the Bruce Lee films. And they're like, Golden Harvest are like, yeah, we'll make this. We just throw a couple of our guys in costumes. No big deal. Perfect. So they were going to make it for like, yeah, they're going to make it for like $2 million or some shit like that. Well, then Jim Henson got involved. And then then that rolled. the, The best combination of things to happen, like independent Ninja Turtles, Jim Henson, like, <laughs> like independent right? Chinese. <laughs> company like with kung fu just like oh let's throw some stunt actors in there it's like yes every single one of those elements works for a ninja uh, ninja turtle movie it's just well then it went even further because uh they needed more money because of course you know the costumes were going to cost a lot more than they anticipated so the new line came in and saved the day and threw in an extra like six or seven million bucks i think it was so in the end the movie was made for like 10 million dollars and jim henson company actually didn't make crap off the movie but what they did get out of that was a lot of uh, um, a lot of research and development as far as like doing animatronics. So then oh, that yeah. graduated into like look at dinosaurs and stuff beyond that. That all built towards that. So like, yeah, Brian Henson was very, very like key to making the TMNT movie happen because Jim Henson wasn't really keen on it. He's like, I don't like the violence. Yeah. And I'm not so sure about this. But he's he's a, Brian was like, no, you got to trust me on this, Dad. This is a big deal. And because of what they were able to do with that, you know, like I said, that ushered in the next, you know, 10 years of special effects for films, you know, all leading up to like Jurassic Park and all those kind of things. So they took the original script and tossed it out. (laughs) And uh, yeah, the creators are like, here, we want this, this, this and this in there. And they just started ripping pages out of the comics. And uh, so like that's why most of the stuff that's in the movie is actually stuff from that first like five issues. And then uh, otherwise, you know, the, the obviously the colors of the head headbands, the pizza and the Calabunga dude, that kind of stuff was influenced by the cartoons and stuff. But other than that, like that's why it was so different was that they were directly getting stuff right out of the comics. So it, it was kind of being simultaneous at the same time as the cartoons. Wow. Uh, so it was like not in tan in tangent with, though, or however you want to put it. So, yeah, it was kind of a it was kind of weird. And then, like I said, basically, it was uh, because of Robert Shea, the movie happened because every studio in town turned it down. They didn't want to take a chance on it. And Robert Shea had no fucking clue what it was. He's like, what's this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like, thing? Ah, what is this? Yeah. Uh, teenage Ninjas? Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Fuck this. You know, he's like and then and then uh, Sarah Risher, I think it was in New Line said, oh, my kid loves those. He's like, yeah. really? She's like, yeah, he's got all the toys and watches the car. Well, then give him some money. <laughs> That's what he said. Get Next kids. thing it's you like know, Vigo so- Mortensen's uh, son told him to do uh, Aragorn. You know, he was like, oh, I love yeah. Lord of the Rings. You got to do it. Those kids, they know what they're talking about. So no shit, right? And so, yeah. So, like, they're like, 
let's do it. And it became the highest grossing independent film of all time until Blair Witch Project. So, wow. Yeah. Oh, that movie, uh, something about it. I don't know how much you caught because I was continuing to talk while my internet went out. Um, I did too. So, like, I just kind of picked up because I wasn't sure if you were. (laughs) Gosh. So I didn't hear what you said. Weather. You didn't hear what I said. So. I was just talking. I just kind of said what I just said. So there you go. Yeah, I was just talking about uh, just the aesthetic of the film. Is just it hits all of my sensibilities. It's like dark. It's got it's got some violence, but not like it's not gory. It's not overdone. It's like a good, you know, a good medium there. It's got some jokes. I mean, it's just so perfect. It's it's got that uh, it's got that stuff. It's got everything I'm looking for in a film. So uh, well, yeah, it's great action comedy, yeah. you know, story, all that the, stuff. The casting is just perfect. Yeah, every single uh, character, like Casey Jones, is great. The chemistry between Casey Jones and uh, April O'Neil is just perfect. Like they're 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 like butting heads at first, and then eventually, you know, they're going to get together. And that right. you know, you can the chemistry was definitely there. Um, it I I like I think the the part where it kind of slows down in the middle when they go to the the ranch you know it, it would seem like uh you know it's a ninja turtle movie like it's a kids movie why are they having this weird slow moment after you know they get their asses kicked and stuff it's like well this isn't a kids movie that's what i kind of <laughs> like about it you know it's it right. doesn't you, they wouldn't put that into a kids movie these days you know when you watch the new ninja turtle movie there's not a slow uh you know a defeated moment where they have to kind of regroup and come together and it's the the flow of the movie is so well done you could see that they, they established it right in the beginning that it was like their very first fight you so you you see them right their very first one they come back they're super excited they're teenagers they're kind of you know giddy about it and then they kind of overdo you know overdo it and they get their asses handed to them and splinter gets taken and then they have to kind of regroup at the ranch and i, I actually kind of like that scene and I always kind of like that those scenes of the brother bonding. You know, the at first thing that they were butting heads and they had they had issues between the two leaders, uh, Ralph and the uh, Leonardo, because they I always see them as the two leaders. I know that mm-hmm. Leonardo is the leader, but I always see Ralph as like a side leader. He's like a, the second in command. Um, and then they kind of they you know they they come to, they regroup they come together they understand why they need to need each other and then they go back out and kick more ass but um yeah i don't know it just that movie is just perfect to me i don't know how it just seems like all those things kind of aligned and and just went out of the park you know you got all of the the production side that aligned perfectly and then just something about the timing of it and you know it came out before it was too big for people too many eyes to be on it you know so there was a less uh oversight and producer notes to kind of go oh can we make it more kid friendly and stuff so it was it was right there it was that that's what i said in the in the beginning is that perfect comic book adaptation of the at least the original one because the original one was dark like you said it was it, it was definitely more dark in that side oh yeah and and yeah and then the only reason that happened that way is because i think it would happen at new line if it wasn't for that like if it right, had been made yeah. at paramount 20th century fox any of those places like it, it would have had so much you know <sighs> There, there's the first movie would have been just like the cartoon. Let's be real; it had just been right. you know wacky fart jokes and co- it would have been worse than the cartoon. Probably it would have been more like the new Michael Bay movies because I don't even know how yeah. anybody can watch those damn things. They are unwatchable in my opinion. <laughs> they're so they're trash. They, yeah, I, I don't even understand how you can go from something like the 1990 film to that. Yep. It's like this is a regression beyond all regression. Like even the original cartoon is more mature than <laughs> the yeah. new Michael Bay movies. Yeah. Which is sad. I'm just there was like, a single wow. a single scene that I liked from the the original one, and it ended up being uh, a scene that they were just like screwing around on set, and they just made it. It was a scene at the at the end. They were going up in the elevator, and they all just everybody start, likes that scene. They start beatboxing with each other because it's like, oh, finally, they get to mess around and they're acting like teenagers. The whole movie, they're either over serious or over like joking around i don't know it's just like they never mesh together and they never felt no. like they were actually brothers and then in that scene it was like okay here are the ninja turtles and then they jump out and then it's all cgi shredder monster thing and i'm like uh, i'm back out of the movie yeah I, <laughs> and those then the second movies. one is just like you don't even i don't even talk about that second one 
Oh, right. And that's where my, I always jump to my example of how the original series was more yeah. uh, believable because, you know, when you've got that inner beast thing, I don't know why they've ta- tapped into that. And it's even, I guess, in the comics and it was in the my only complaint about the Batman TMNT thing was like, where did this inner beast shit come from all yeah. of a sudden? I don't get that because at least in the original cartoon that, you know, they have those robots go to the zoo and they kidnap a warthog and a in a yeah. rhinoceros and that's why bebop and rocksteady are warthog and a rhinoceros you don't have this yeah. inner beast shit it's weird like oh it's inside of you that's what you yeah like, what is it, like a totem animal like your spirit animal yeah i don't know man those movies are so bad and i don't how do you how do you make a movie that's like that bad whenever you have a template that is just so perfect like the very first one that's why i try to even not even think about any of the other movies even though i do kind of like the second one but not nearly as as much as the first one. I just go, look, that first one is just so spot on. You nailed it with the very first go. And it's like, I don't know how you're going to go go any higher than that. Well, even that second one's better than the, anything oh, we got. Oh, miles, film. miles better. Even the third one. The one that we <laughs> go back in time in Japan is far better than the Michael Bay ones. The only stuff I don't like in the third one is is they all of a sudden started doing modern, like, references like the swing and that kind yeah. of crap and what did you expect the adams family and that kind of you know just because the adams family were big just at that time dating just the hell little out of it. dated references yeah like at least the first two movies have most of the references are not that dated maybe the ralph nader reference but, of the, <laughs> but like who what kid is gonna laugh at a jose ralph canseco nader joke? Bet? yeah or the jose canseco joke maybe yeah <laughs> but i mean even then it's like jose canseco's he's a big baseball player and it's gonna be you know, going to be in the pantheon of, of sports references. So it's not that bad. I mean, you can still joke about, uh, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, even though he's not in, you know, it, w- it was like they were joking about things, but it wasn't dated. It wasn't like they were right. making jokes about, you know, family <laughs> matters on TV or something like, you know, Oh, yeah. did I do that? You know, that would be yeah. dated. Exactly. No, like there was only two jokes that I remember my folks laughing at in the second one. And that was, it's Raph, yeah, a little too Raph. That one, <laughs> and the other one. <laughs> this net is very well constructed. Yeah, remind me to drop a letter to Ralph Nader. <laughs> like, like, those were the only two lines my parents laughed at in the second like, one. I, I'm just, I get that. That's funny. Yeah, my parents got it. As a kid, I'm like, who? <laughs> now I know, but like then it was like, who? You know, the yeah. watchdog guy. But yeah. yeah, you're like, okay. I was kind of that way with Jose Canseco until later I figured out who he was. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna guess that he's a sports guy. I didn't. Really yeah, well, when that movie sports. came out, he was still. I don't know if he's still playing, but he was still pretty popular. Well, I mean, he's got a bat named after himself. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, when he, that. I knew who he was. The only, yeah, there were in the first film. I don't think there was any references or anything I didn't get. Um, and yeah. that's saying a lot for a kid at that level. Cause I mean, I was 10 years old when it came out. So, I mean, I mean, I'm prime age when it came out anyway. Yeah. So like, it was just, that was my jam. It was like, that was my star Wars of my generation or whatever you want to call yeah, it yeah. to me. Um, and I know some people pick Jurassic park, but no, to me, that was the movie that like, okay, this is ours. You know, this was, that was our moment. Those, like whenever you hit that yeah. age, it's like when you're nine or 10, if there's a big movie right there, like that is your huge, like mine was, um lord of the rings mm-hmm. so lord of the rings came out whenever i was nine well i was i guess i was eight at the time but you know the trilogy was happening during while i was eight nine and ten so i mean it was it was huge it was like that harry potter came out at the same time and those were like my big the, i mean yeah, star wars is my star too. wars and the prequels um but but less so yeah, but those were all at the same time is what I was saying. Right. But isn't it hard to believe that all at the same time we had The Matrix, The Matrix, Prequel, yeah. Lord of the Rings, and even Harry Potter if you're a fan. So, like, that was a hell of a time, too, yeah. to be a fan. There was a, a bunch of those those big franchises kind of happening all at the same time. Um, But, yeah, I, so uh, I had a question about Did Do you have any brothers or sisters when you were growing up? I, as I said before, I do have a brother. Um. And uh, he's a little younger than me, four years. So, the question is, which Ninja Turtle were you when you played? I generally gravitated towards Raph or Mikey. Mm. Um, Just depended on my mood. Um, And that was because Raph was probably more like my attitude as a kid. But I was really good with nunchucks, so I always gravitated towards those. That's the one I want. That's good. Yeah, like, 
it just for some reason, I always, I was always fascinated, even before the Ninja Turtles and Nunchucks, like way back with Bruce Lee and all that kind of stuff. So like Nunchucks were just cool to me. Um, and I was always making nunchucks as a kid. I mean, hell, I got a nunchuck collection now that I'd be embarrassed to show people. <laughs> um, but these are real ones now. Um, but no, like yeah, you upgrade. I upgraded. I even got size and a sword. I got oh, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Like yeah, so I mean, I've got stuff. But you know, I took Taekwondo as a kid because of this and Karate Kid, and um, you know, and that was the other thing is like this led. There was this like era of just you had nonstop stuff as a kid that was just great entertainment. I mean, starting from the early 80s on up through this and beyond, I mean, just just leading up to this, you had stuff like the Karate Kid and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then Ninja Turtles came out. So, like, there was this era of just, like, Kung Fu was big and Bruce Lee was making yeah. a big comeback. The Last Dragon? The Last Dragon was also that in that was, era. I know it was I fairly watched big. it a lot. Yeah, it was pretty big. Um, so, yeah, you had all that kind of stuff come out of that era. And I think that – and the thing is, if I remember right – uh, a lot of the same people that produced uh, or had stuff to do with like the last dragon also worked on Ninja Turtles as well. Cause I think that was also a golden harvest film. If oh, I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah. I think you're right. So yeah, like golden harvest also then went on to do like a bunch of Jackie Chan films and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But yeah, but yeah, I mean that movie was just, it, it just, like you said, it was a perfect kind of storm of things to happen, but it almost like every step of the way, it almost didn't happen. That was the thing. And, there was always something getting in its way and it was always money and just the, the yeah. how they managed to pull that movie off with just $10 million is amazing because it would cost you so much now probably to produce some anything close to that. And I'm not even talking about the ones they did a couple of years ago because yeah. I mean, that's not what anybody wants. We want something like this. We don't have to, I don't want a, a sequel necessarily, but how something hard would it like be? The spirit yeah, of exactly. That, of that feel, you know, something that's not a big, explosion fest that's bright colors i mean I, I know that the first thing that a lot of people think of is the cartoons and the cartoons are super bright but i mean the, the ninja turtles as a whole is not that you know ninja turtles is kind of all of those things it, at least for me those the original cartoons and that movie and the comics that's all kind of that that darker but with fun you know and that's what we want we we need a movie like that these days that's it's got a you know it's got that heart in it, but it's also got the darkness. You know, you need kind of both of those and a little bit of grit. Just get a little Absolutely. bit of grit. I know that's like overused these days. Oh, you know, got to make a gritty movie, but those those original ones they were black and white. They were sketchy, dark. You know, like it it, it had that dark, but it was also kind of had the heart. You know, it was a little silly, just a little bit. You know, you had the the, the mousers and all that kind of stuff, and then uh, I mean the the whole other dimension what was it dimension x or what was it called? well the utroms were in the comic and then in the in the, right. in the show they made krang which was kind of like an utrom right so you kind of have that it, I, that's what pissed me off because i watched that first michael bay one and i did not like it at all i i don't like megan fox and i thought she was a horrible choice and i still do and then the second one the trailer got me because i was like dang it krang bebop and rocksteady are in it maybe there's some hope but then it came out and it was just bad. And I was, that's what pissed me off because I had that hope. You get that hope up and then it's dashed again because you're like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. Michael Bay produced and it's just trash. And it's like they don't understand the actual source material. Just ugh. They're saying you're a little quiet in the chat, by the way. Oh, yeah. I don't know if there's something wrong. I think it's StreamYards. They don't, it doesn't like my mic. It always turns me <laughs> way down. But no, yeah, and, and the new films, the other thing I noticed that a lot of people forget, is, or not forget, but really kind of overlook, is I usually point to that as like the beginning of this downfall yeah. of movies, uh, because look at it, April O'Neil is shoved every which way but Sunday into that storyline where she doesn't need to be. And it's oh, like yeah. obvious that they're trying to make well, her like this... into their their origins. And yeah, like, she's all up in there, man. That's unnecessary. The way they did it in this yeah. in the original movie it was perfect. Like she was just it was she was even the first person that they saved in you know in a in their first like outing so it's like that's why they had the connection they had a little bit of connection cuz they watched tv and they knew who she was it does, she doesn't have to be some she was really their you know their uh caretaker and they were her pets and she was connected to the science lab and left the science it's like ah you didn't need this convoluted backstory don't you don't have to have that Things well, it's there to, to make simple. her more important than she really is. Yeah. Yeah. It was so it could all be about Megan Fox. That's what it was. So it could all, everything could tie back to her. And it's like, it doesn't need to. Doesn't need Cause to. then in that they make the turtles unrealistic because come on, 
it's laughable that Splinter learned karate or I mean it's um, yeah it's somewhat laughable the, that he learned it from the cage, cage but <laughs> yeah but he I learned mean, it from he was book. he was he was with a sensei you know with an exactly, actual yeah. um martial artist so like he watched him and you know could kind of copy those moves but it's like from a, a handbook <laughs> like you you learn kung fu from a handbook i know the whole situation is kind of ridiculous but you have to take a little bit of it you have to buy into the world a little bit you know i don't know There's yeah i mean there. i can i mean in that first movie it's even a little goofy where you got the little rat it's doing like, the karate i get that yeah. yeah that's kind of yeah. stupid all they really needed to do was just have him being a rat watching him from his yeah. cage and just simply say like you know, I, I couldn't do that stuff. Or I didn't know what he was doing until, you know, I developed through, you know, my mutation. Then I remembered all the training my yeah. master did. And then I imparted that onto my sons. Well, you know, that's the, all they had to say was something like that. Yeah. The original comics, it was he wasn't a, a person that the last no. thing he touched was a rat or something. What? No, the movie, the movie is exactly like the comics, except for they cut out one little bit. The, the cartoon, they changed it. They, the cartoon they made it, is the one that's that way. Yeah, they made right. it a little more streamlined, which I don't actually hate that. that yeah, if you're going to do that, that makes more sense. You kind of make um, those two characters one character. One character, yes. Um, because works. in the whole storyline, there is actually a whole other character that's left out. Because the original fight was between Yoshi, Saki's older brother, and um, the girl. And then what happened was, is, you know, Yoshi left after killing Saki's brother. So right, Saki right. came to America looking for revenge. That part's left out of all the versions yeah. of the stories. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's that whole back and forth thing there. That that, rivalry going yeah. On. So they just left that part out, you know, in the other versions, but yeah. So, I mean, there is more of a motivation for, for Saki to want to kill him too, then. Yeah. That's kind of what that comes from, but yeah. yeah I mean, the foot clan, I love how it's the original comic was like a tongue in cheek, but it was dark at the same time, you know, because it's got the foot clan. It's supposed to be like the hand. Yeah. You know, but it's kind of taken seriously. Again, it's like you buy into the world and you take it seriously inside the world. When you're in it, you go, oh, okay, these are the foot clan. They're scary. But you kind of step back and you go, okay, I get it. It's like a joke on the hand. Um, But inside the world, it's serious. And it's kind of like a Cobra Kai thing to where you got, you know, wayward kids who don't have any direction. Right. And this was the time, you know, where gangs were getting big and stuff like that in the late eighties. Yeah. And yeah, you can see where something like this, where a guy could come in and, you know, you could think these kids are starting to get some kind of good direction, but Oh no, these teach them <laughs> how to basically be assassins and thieves, right? Yeah. you know? And, and, and that's like, the other I thing. I like that, yeah. that, uh, the kind of beeline story of Danny, where he's kind of drawn into this, the Foot Clan, he's, a, he's the perfect kind of side character yeah. to explain the, the villains. So you get to see the villains through his eyes and and you kind of see what their organization is like. But then it's like, you know, it's a story. Like you said, it, it, was, it came out at a time where, like, there was a lot of gang violence on the streets. And it was showing the story of a kid that got into that, but at heart wasn't necessarily a bad kid. And a lot of those kids that you find out all the foot clan kids, they're not really bad kid. They're not bad people. They've been kind of brought into this gang because they've, you know, for whatever reason they're, they're left behind, you know, people don't, don't care about them. And that's kind of the story of actual gangs, you know, it's kids yeah. that, that feel like they're left out. And then the gang goes, Hey, we can take care of you. And then they become bad. So it, it, it was like a story of this kid gets sucked into the foot clan and then he does bad things even though he's not really a bad guy at heart. And then at, by the end of the movie, he brings it back. That's what I like about like movies these days. They don't have those layers. You know, there's, there's oh, the no. Ninja Turtle story on top, which is like this, you know, they're Ninja Turtles that are mutant. And they're like, what? Like, what is it? This? this is ridiculous. And they're fighting a guy named Shredder and they have a, a rat. That's their like sensei dad. Like this makes no, like it's kind of ridiculous. And then you got Casey Jones and then Casey Jones and, April O'Neil's story between each other. And then you have Danny. That's another layer movies these days. They don't have that depth. You know, there's no, there's no, uh, it's only surface level. There's not like the multiple storylines going off at the same time. And like, you didn't have to do it for a Ninja Turtle movie, you know, but they yeah. did. They took the time well, to like write that out. And that first film is a lot about fathers and sons. Yeah. Um, right. You know, splinter to the dad. 
And Danny is his dad. And then also, you know, Shredder becoming a surrogate father to these kids. Right, right. He even and, says, and, I am your father. Yeah. You know? And, yeah, clearly. Yeah. And then April has a connection with her father. You know, there that's brought up. A, she's living in the out his dream, even though it's not panning out with the antique shop. Right. And then, you yeah. know, they go to the old family home and she talks about, you know, her dad a little bit. So yeah, there's a lot of uh of like, you know, homages to fathers in the film and how important they are to young boys, especially uh at that age. And yeah, like I, I like I said, that definitely reflected, you know, the bigger cities, inner cities, uh, especially in New York yeah. and LA at the time that were definitely starting to get taken over by these gangs and a lot of them made up with kids that were only 12 13 14 years old so this was not above the realm of possibility at all i mean this was like they're the demographic of the movie like they were going absolutely this movie is directly for those kids that that may be in that kind of situation and and showing like there's a better way you know it sounds like oh you're getting so deep on on a ninja turtle movie but that's what's so great about it is that it does have those layers to it you know, it does have a message. It's not just popcorn crap like the new ones. It's got something to learn when you get out of it. You know, there's a moral to the story. There's heroes that you can look up to. There's villains that you could be afraid of and not want to emulate. You know, those are those elements are all there. That's what's missing out of movies, I feel like, these days, is that they don't have that moral, you know, compass. There's, no, there's nothing to take out of it. It's just like, oh, well, I, I watched a stupid... A kids movie you know it's like the the boiling star wars down to it's a kids movie with wizards and laser swords you know it's yeah. that, everything is stupid because it's a kids movie it's like it doesn't have to be a kids movie right. it can be a kids movie and also tell you some shit that's why pixar movies are so good so you know they they tell you a story and there's some kind of point to it it's not just colors and motion Absolutely. And I agree. And I mean, it's it's funny how, you know, you're just looking at the movie, like a name, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, it's, you brought it up before. It's a a whole concept. is kind of ridiculous. It's tongue in cheek. It's satire to begin with. Um, But the fact that we got such a great film with such great layers out of that first movie is just astounding. And even though like, you know, critics at the time weren't too nice to it. I got to imagine if like Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert were alive now and you showed them the new Michael Bay movies and then showed them these, they'd be like, oh, wow. I can't yeah. believe I was so hard on those. There's early a movies. contrast, you know, a big contrast. And, and again, it's like that chaotic, just crackhead nature of the new films on top of all the other problems that just it, it, basically they made the movies that everybody pictured when you say the name Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They didn't really get into it. You know what I mean? Like they yeah, didn't really exactly just surface level. It's all surface level, exactly. And and that's what I love about this film. And even though it is technically a movie about talking turtles that eat pizza and kick the shit out of people made for kids, yeah, it has so many various levels to it. And I mean, I remember even my mom enjoying the film at the time. Like I said, the second one they weren't too big of fans of, but you know, my mom liked the film. I mean, all my cousins and, and friends and everything. I mean, I don't remember anybody disliking that first movie. I mean, even yeah. adults were just like, Oh, it was pretty good. You know, I remember a lot of adults saying that they like had no ties, never seen the cartoons before, but they'd see that movie and they were just like, yeah, that was really good. It was pretty good yeah. considering, you know, and I mean, if you've got that going for it, especially in an era when people didn't take any of that kind of stuff seriously. And like you said, if it had any kind of oversight from like a Fox or a Disney or anything like that, there's no way we would have gotten that movie. Yeah, Not the no way, way it was. And, and it was, it was just a once in a lifetime chance to get it right. And they did. Uh, it would be nice if we got something like a Netflix series in that vein, but I just, oh, I don't know if they could pull it off don't again. Even, don't tease me with that kind of talk. <laughs> I don't even, even more adult would be great, but yeah. Oh yeah. dude. Uh, who owns them right now? Would that be HBO Max? Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon owns Could they do? Mm-hmm. I mean, HBO Max, could there be? A, a well, there was a series? rumor for a while that uh, Eastman and, uh, was talking about it that Netflix was showing some interest in a live action adult series. So it is, it is on the cards. It is something that's been brought up. Um, and there has okay. been some stuff here and there coming out like everything lately that come that's coming out of the turtles is kind of like similar to the 1990 design, but like a little different or new, right. like there's this new uh, PS4 game coming out. I don't know if you saw the trailer for it yet. No, but uh, yeah, they look similar to the way they did in that DC game. So I'm curious if that's okay. not kind of setting us up for like, this is what the new 
like yeah. versions are going to look I like. Mean, like unanimously on the internet, whenever they released the designs for the new turtles, they, everybody was like, no, give us something that's closer to the first movie. You know, like that's like, why do you, the, the design is there. You don't got to mess with it. Don't put noses and trash all over them and stuff. You know, just simple. Make it look like the the original cartoon or the original design of the turtles. And that, that's all you need. So I, I hope they, they do something. I, you know, I do have my, my misgivings with Netflix adaptations. So I'd be afraid that they'd fuck it up in some way, but you know, so it's like well, the upside you was... sometimes you have great Netflix shows. Sometimes you have really trash ones. It's right. Hard to tell. I was going to say the upside of Netflix is they don't really produce stuff in house. Usually yeah. it's the quality control they... is just all over the place. Yeah, so it's like whatever they get from whoever, you know. Like right. Kind of yeah. So I'm looking for the new trailer for that game. I gotta check that out. I gotta check that. Out. It looks really good. Well, I think that's Here probably that's. Unless you have anything else to say about the movie, I think we're we're probably good. Do you, do you have anything? Um, not about the movie itself. I think we've. I mean. It's a great film. I can't wait to maybe talk a little bit about Secret of the Ooze with you. Other than that, I mean... Yeah, we should do a follow-up. What can you go wrong with this film? I mean, I, I I could recommend it to anybody. I'd be interested to see if somebody who hasn't seen it before sees it now and if it still stands up. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, hey, you're sharing it. Let me... Yeah, I don't know if you can pop it up in your share or not, but this is from the new game that's coming out. Let me see if I can set it up. Yeah. So it's kind of a kind of a similar design to the uh, movies and this is similar to what they looked like in the dc uh injustice 2 game too and that's a shot from the new game there okay all yeah. right it's not too bad and they also have skins for like uh let's see if i can get to that part here i don't want to play the whole thing i don't want to whatever but yeah they got see i like that there bit. we go that reminds me of the movie yeah a little homage. and then they also had a thing here for the where is it at where you can get skins like the cartoon uh, and a prestige pack. Oh, right. So is this like a... Why do they keep giving Donatello fucking goggles, goggles. anymore? Why, why do keep I don't understand that. that but... the, only, the only thing that they, they know how to do is is say, oh, he's he's got he's into technology. Give him some goggles. <laughs> so that was my... I was going to ask you that before. Uh, what, what What's your turtle then, since you didn't answer that before? Okay, okay. So my turtle, when we play... Whenever my older stepbrother was not around, I was I was Raph. But whenever he was around, I was Donatello. <laughs> Cause he always wanted Raph. Gotcha. He was I mean he was closer to Raph, like personality wise, so it made sense. Um, and then whenever he wasn't around, I was I was uh I took over. Yeah, yeah, usually cool. most kids around me would fight over like Donatello and Michelangelo. Those two seem to be the ones that everybody was always fighting to be. <laughs> Nobody wants Leo. He's no, nobody wants to be Leo. <laughs> He's a serious leader. Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to be Leo. Nobody wants to be Leo. But he is cool. I mean, he's got the swords. He does have that That's going true. for him. Um, so I saw when Yellow Flash was in here earlier, he seen he said that uh, Last Ronin two came out. Have you got a chance to read the the Last I, Ronin I part have one? Not. I need to. I need to get it. I might. Oh, get it's it excellent. Tomorrow. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's harder to find the first part unless you get it digitally, right? Because yeah, but so, uh, okay. So give me a, give me a rundown. What is it basically about? Don't ruin it, but again, yeah, I can't tell you too much because it would ruin it. Um, but it's set in the future, or like maybe it's present day, but it's been yeah. whatever. Like the turtles the are future, like uh, all the turtles are gone except for one. Oh shit! So like everybody's dead and oh, uh, Splinter, everybody. And they don't tell you which one it is until the end of the first book. And they keep teasing you. It's so like this one or this one or this one. Yeah, left. yeah, oh. yeah. So it's kind of it's that's the that's kind of the draw in. Um, and then it kind of just also sets up what's going on next. And yeah, it's really is this a uh, mini series or is I it... think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, is I got this Dark Horse. Uh, who had them before? Uh, it's IDW. Uh, IDW. IDW, right? Um, yeah, it's Eastman Laird. As Corza and Delgado did it, so this is the first time Eastman and Laird, I think, have worked together since forever too. Uh, yeah, I gotta, get, I gotta pick that up. Last time I got one of their the comics was the IDW uh, individual issues of uh, like each one, each turtle got their own 
there was a oh, oh dude oh dude it's uh oh, i gotta get that and that is how much i paid for it too like 50 bucks <laughs> yeah oh man that's how quick i got well, it's doing well. That's great. But yeah, the last time I got it was a uh, I got a rough uh standalone story from IDW. That was a while ago. I need to pick up on that. Yeah. But anyways, I, I I we should we should definitely do uh a second edition of this and do sure. Secret of the Ooze cuz that one's a whole different one. That's one I'm not quite I I'd be interested to hear more of your thoughts on that one cuz I'm not quite as attached to that one as I am the first one cuz I didn't know about it until I was 17. Um, but yeah, that one's a whole different type of movie. It's, yeah. It's, to me, that for those first two are just like, they're together. Cause there was yeah. a year gap between two and three. And then like three just kind of came out. I didn't even know three was coming. In fact, I found out about three by seeing the, the, the poster in the theater. I think when I went to see like Adam's family values or some like, shit, I'm like, Oh, and there's another one. I'm like, wait, is that an, because it caught me out of the corner of my eye because it was that Shogun poster right. with the orange background and stuff. And I'm like, is that a Ninja Turtle? And like, because it was like way across the theater. So after the movie, I'm like, I got to go see this poster because it would bother me through the whole movie. And I went and seen it. I'm like, sure as shit. Because I seen the big three, but I couldn't read yeah. the rest of it because of the way the colors all blended. And I'm like, is that Ninja Turtles 3? And like I said, sure as shit, I got over there. And I'm like, holy cow. So now like that, that one came something. out of nowhere. Yeah. That is something kind of off topic, but on topic at the same time. That is something that I miss about movie theaters. I worked in a movie theater for 10 years and I watched the degrade of the movie theater. And it was like whenever you get out of a movie, there's movie posters in there. You see like, oh, the upcoming Superman movie. You know, I saw, I saw Man of Steel. I saw the Watchmen posters up there. Uh, you know, like movies that you could get excited for. And it's just like a tease. I watched them slowly replace a lot of the poster cases with just more advertising. Like it was just like, I don't know if they didn't make as many posters or what. They just continued to fill those poster cases that usually were like teases with like, Oh, buy Coke, buy M and M's. And like, that's part of the thing that I got excited. Like you just said, like you'd see a movie across the the lobby and be like i didn't come here for any of that but what are the magic of movie the movie theater that is just like it's well gone. yeah because this was also before the day of the internet yeah right um, so had, like that would be your own only taste yeah because like that was my that was always one of my favorite parts of the going to the theater like you said is because when you would walk out is when they had all the coming soon po- soon posters right and yeah you would get that was sometimes your first you know idea that something like this was coming because you didn't get any of this shit back in the day, like you had to seek it out. Like you were lucky if you get a Fangoria or a star log or even entertainment weekly didn't cover a lot of the genre stuff. Yeah. Most of the stuff even then that they covered was like, honestly, I don't even know if they Ninja Turtles ever even graced the cover of entertainment weekly, to be honest with you. That's my point. Like they didn't really start getting into geek stuff until star Wars came out again. That's all like side stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, they that's did like a bunch nerds. of star Wars stuff when that came out. And then that's when they finally got into the superheroes and star Wars and all that kind of stuff. Right. So uh, we will definitely do a secret of the use in the future. We got to we got to round we got to circle back on that. What is uh, the secret? What is the secret? What is it? What's connected? But I, I think that'll that'll wrap us up for tonight. Thank you, Tom, for coming on my channel, my lowly little absolute channel. pleasure. I appreciate it, sir. Talking about one of my favorite movies of all time, Ninja Turtles. Teenage well, I get to talk Ninja about Turtles. one of my favorite movies with one of my favorite YouTube personalities. So there you oh, go, bro. Thanks, man. We, well, didn't chill. About, we didn't even talk about the awesome song. Oh, oh yeah, the soundtrack. Like we didn't even get to the soundtrack. Dude. Uh, the soundtrack power. is great. T-U-R-T-L-E, so Power, yeah. No, Power. And then you had uh, the MC Hammer song also. Right. And, uh, and Spin That Wheel from... Uh, Spin That Wheel. Well, it's on the soundtrack as... Uh, I can't remember the name now, but... It, Technotronic is who it really is. <laughs> Let's be real. But, like, yeah, and, and there's... so good in it. Yeah, they end up. I think they just changed their name, or it was a different DJ or something after that. But it's the same people, basically. Fantastic. The pump up the jam, lady. Pump up the jam. It's a fantastic. Yeah, it's a soundtrack. great soundtrack. And then the score finally, finally, finally got released a couple, like two years ago, and they just are releasing the score for the second film now coming up. So that's oh, do they have fun. it on vinyl? Because that would be bad. Yes. Ass. Oh my. I actually have two copies of the first soundtrack on oh, vinyl. Tell you what, if we ever meet up, that one's yours. Oh, my extra dude. copy. 
I will take it. <laughs> I knew you would. It's it's the orange one. I can't deny. I got two copies on accident, so I just I got one that's still kind of sealed, and I just left it alone. So it's yours. I'll pay you market value. Nah, nah. Don't worry about it. All right, man. Well, thanks so much for coming on my channel and talking about uh, one of the best movies ever. Um, if you want to watch more stuff from Tom, they got a great channel. It's very informative. Have a lot of great, great videos over there at Midnight's Edge. And uh, what's the other one? Midnight's Edge. Midnight's Live? Edge After Dark. And, and we also have the live archive. Yep. So go follow those, please, if you want just good entertainment and good videos in your subscription yeah. feeds. And I don't know why you wouldn't want that. So and actually, I suggest yeah. you check out our uh, Robert Shea interview since we talked about him earlier. He actually tells the story that I just reiterated That's about right. uh, how Ninja Turtles came to be at New Line Cinema. So that was yeah, this guy interview. was, you don't know who Robert Shea is. He's probably responsible for most of your childhood. <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome interview. So go watch that, please, everybody. Like if you liked The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, uh, Ninja Turtles, Nightmare on Elm Street, this guy was behind it all. Like he was the producer of New Line Cinema. You know, he made it. So I love New Line. Those are some of my favorites. Suburban things. Commando, all that stuff from when we were kids. Well, you were still not even born yet. I was but... not, <laughs> not even born yet. Not even born yet. But he so, did produce The Lord of the Rings as well. We also oh, talked really? about that. Yes. I He's the reason it's three movies. Uh, cause, uh, the Weinsteins only wanted to make two. Uh, so then, uh, P yeah, P Peter Jackson come in to uh, new line cinema cause they needed some more money. And he's like, all right, I'll do it. But isn't it supposed to be three? He's like, huh? Yeah. Isn't it three books? Yeah, Three. <laughs> he's like, make three. He's like, make... <laughs> he's the reason we got three movies. So that's funny. Cause that one, it deserves three and the Hobbit should have been just two. Yeah. Well, he had nothing to do with The Hobbit, I don't think. Maybe in a co-executive just out of just whatever. Just very distant. Yeah, connection. I don't think he had much to do with that one. Because like he said at the time, he's like, if I could have made five, six, seven Lord of the Rings movies, I would have. There were seven books. He's like, <laughs> I'd have done it. It's like, it's uh, Lord of the Rings, man. I would have loved it. It would have been great. <laughs> and he's like, the studio thought I was going to destroy us. I'm like, this is paid for. <laughs> like, What are you freaking out about? That was what he made his, his standing on. He would pre-sell everything overseas. So all the money that they oh, would get so in. already got all the money in. Exactly. The movie was already paid for. So whatever they made in the U.S. is just money in the bank. It's brilliant. Yep. It's a businessman. It is. He's a good businessman. He knew how to do it. And Warner Brothers shoved his ass out. So, But anyway, I, I enjoyed this conversation. I always love talking to you, Garrett. And we got to have you on more often on, on our channel. But yeah, you got this pesky morning gig that you're always so I know. busy on. What a, what a bummer. You know, we got to go on this morning show every <laughs> every day. <laughs> were you even working this morning? Because you were quite yeah. active. And okay, uh, I was gonna well, say I was yeah, gonna we almost working. Okay, I almost asked you to come in, but I'm like, ah, maybe he's working. But I thought you, I saw you on Twitter, so I'm like, yeah, maybe he's not. But yeah, I'll just let him go. Yeah, I ain't gonna bother him. So. But thanks again, and uh, we'll definitely talk again. Anytime, pretty Anytime. soon. Thanks everybody in the chat for showing up. You guys are awesome, uh, and I'll see you maybe tomorrow. I think we're definitely doing a stream tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Peace.